So if you pay yourself a salary as 45K as administrator, you can keep 20% profit tax up to 100K. Hello guys, welcome back to SN Tax. Andre Papito here, and in this video, I'm going to talk about the corporate tax in Belgium. So we are going to see how the companies are taxed on their profit. Okay? If you're new to this channel, I just want to remind you that the Zentaxa talks about how to optimize your taxes in a specific country when you want to relocate into. We are number one channel on the Italian tax system, but we also talk about Belgium, Portugal, Albania. Soon you're gonna see a new jurisdiction in our channel. And we help people to optimize their taxes before their location. So we help people to understand and planify a relocation and see from the taxation point of view if that country makes sense and how we can optimize the taxes as much as possible, okay? Um, for this specific video, I want to focus the attention on the corporate tax in Belgium. So the corporate tax, it's something that it's quite a sensitive argument because whenever we run a business, we want to see how much taxes, uh, how the, a certain country taxes our entities on our profit, okay? On our business profit. So we're going to straight to the point. In Belgium, the taxes on companies are simple 25% and whenever we want to withdraw money from out of the company through salary, through other ways, we always focus on dividends. And the dividends in Belgium are a big 30%. Okay? So we have a corporate tax 25% and dividend at 30%. So as you can see, it's quite big. And this is what you see. Basically, wherever online, on if you Google, it's easy to find this information, but a lot of people are not aware of that you have some ways to either reduce your corporate tax and your dividends. And I'm gonna explain you how. First of all, these two tax rates are applied to ordinary companies. So whatever size, ordinary, ordinary company means whatever size of turnover, whatever size of number of employees, so for general uh, situations, for general cases. But actually, in Belgium, there is also the concept of small, medium enterprises. So that are identified as SME. And those are the company with no more than 50 employees, employees on average per year, okay? No more than a turnover of 9 million euro without, without taking into account the VAT and um, a balance sheet uh, of 4 million and a half, okay? So if you are below these numbers with your balance, with your turnover and with your number of employees, in Belgium, you are a small, a small, medium enterprise. And now, thanks to this category, we, we can see how we can squeeze down our perf, uh, corporate tax in our dividends. So, what is a SME company in Belgium? And the SME company, they benefit from an automatic, in the first year of activity, automatic reduction on their profit tax down to 20%, okay? For the first 100,000 euro of profit. So the first 100,000 euro profit, you pay 20%. Above 100,000 euro profit, you keep paying 25% in corporate tax, okay? The dividend, the first year is still 30%. Now, keep in mind that the second year, you can keep this at the same rate, with the same threshold, but the dividend shrinks to 20%. And the third year, you have 20% on corporate tax, 100K, up to always 100K, and the dividend shrinks to 15%. Now, this thing is possible if you fulfill a criteria. Whenever you incorporate a small, medium enterprise in Belgium, you have to give the entire legal capital so the initial capital, which is 18,500 euros. So if you give all the legal minimum, legal uh, capital of this amount of money, from the moment you inject this amount of money, you start counting the decrease of your dividends, okay? So if you incorporate your small medium enterprise since the first year with this amount of money, you can start counting your dividends from the first 
tax year, okay? Of course, the dividend will be taken the next following year of the close of the balance, so this will be the second, third, and the fourth year, okay? So you can see you can have the shrink of your dividends if you fulfill these requirements. Of course, in Belgium, you can also incorporate a, uh, normally a SRL, a, a limited liability company with one euro, but then you won't benefit from this dividend reduction. And then what happened? The fourth year, okay, you still have this benefit, that's fine. Now you reach 15% thanks to this criteria that you have uh, respected. And after four years, you exit the status of startup. Okay, so a small medium enterprise in Belgium, whenever it's created, it's by default a startup activity. And you benefit from the first four years of startup in which you have by default the reduction of the corporate tax on the first 100,000 euro, and moreover, you don't have to pre-tax your corporate tax. What does it mean, pre-tax? Basically, it means that you have to start paying and advance your taxes while are you making money, eh? while are you invoicing. While in the first four years, this is not a mandatory. I mean, you can still, you're, you're not obliged to do it actually, but then you will pay a penalty of 9% at the top of your tax that you have to pay. So it's to be considered that from the fourth year onwards, you have to pre-tax your taxes. But the top of it, what happened is that when you exit your four, fourth years of a startup, this things is not valid anymore. It's not by default given for grant. But from the fifth year, uh, you have to basically, uh, you will have 20% of profit tax if you are below 40K, 45k at profit and above it's 25% unless, so this is option A. Option B, unless you pay yourself a salary of as administrator or administrators, if you are more than one, at least 45k. So if you pay yourself a salary as 45k as administrator, you can keep 20% profit tax up to 100k. If you don't, you can have 20% profit tax up to 45k as a profit in your company, okay? So this is this is what changed from the fifth year of activity. And then it, it stays like this until you, I mean, as long as you are keeping inside the sphere of this me, of small medium enterprise. But it's true that you have to respect this, uh, uh, these requirements. The dividend still remains at 15%, huh? so you can keep paying 50% and you have another extra element a lot of people are not aware of, is that you can take out an, another form of dividend at only 5%, starting from the, after the fifth year, so from the sixth years. So along with your 15% dividend, you can also take, out your, take your money out of your company at only 5%, thanks to the uh, reserve of liquidation. Okay, how can we build this reserve of liquidation? Here is a matter of choosing and it's a matter of uh, tax planning everything since the beginning. Huh? So this kind of structure, exploiting all the single element and, and any, any kind of details hidden behind the Belgium law and behind the tax clarification and the tax code, it's always a matter of having a consultancy we provide this, this kind of consultancy. If you find in the description below uh, this video, our email contact info at sntaxa.com, you can contact us and we can schedule a call, 15 minutes, one hour, or a tax simulation, and we can plan together a long tax planning in long term, like five years, 10 years, in order to exploit all these kind of benefits and squeeze your corporate tax, your dividend tax, and at the top of it, have other way of withdrawing money out of your company with lower tax rates. So I was saying the reserval, uh, the reserval liquidation, this 5%, how can we withdraw money for, with only 5% tax? It comes together with the dividend, as you can also take out dividend and at the same time this uh, reserval liquidation. So it works that since the first year, um, if you, you can say to your accountant, look, I want to put aside in my reserve like 5,000 euro, okay? So 5,000 euro, it's some money which has to be lower than your profit. So let's imagine your profit, it's like 80,000 euro, okay? The first year you make, you make 80,000 euro in profit to your company. You pay 20% profit tax on this 80,000 euro. But you can, take an, you can pick up also an amount of money that has to be 
um, lower than your profit, so that's the rule, and also lower with a certain level of delta. These are details that we can see in consultancy. So I will pick up like 5,000 euro, okay? And I will put aside in my reserve of liquidation 5,000 euro. And I will pay 10% tax on it. Stay with me. I will do this for the first year, second year, three years, four years, and I'm going to accumulate this reserve of liquidation with 5,000 euro for the first year. The second year, I will put aside the 3,000 euro and I will pay on it 10%. Okay, so it's 10% at the top of what I've already paid as a profit tax. So I will give to the state extra 10% in order, in order to put aside my reserve of liquidation. And I reach, I don't know, the sixth year, with a liquidation of around 20,000 euro, okay? Which I've already paid taxes 10% of what I've chosen to put aside. And on this 20,000 euro, I will pay this only 5% tax. So from the sixth year onwards, I can start taking money out of my reserve of liquidation, pay only five years on this 20,000 that I put it aside. So basically, <clears throat> my effective tax pressure for my reserve liquidation is only 14.5% that goes straight into my pocket if I planify this liquidation, this reserve liquidation, since the first years. It's a tax strategy. I will do, I will recommend you if you have some profit, of course, some positive profit in your company. As you can see here, this is only one of several, uh, let's say, tricks. I, would, I wouldn't call them tricks. A really legal way to take out money for, out of your company, out of your Belgian company, legally without any problem. You just have to know the law correctly and planify correctly your tax strategy. So we are here in Syntaxa to help you. Uh, if you like this kind of content, um, a notification bell, like button, and subscribe the channels to be always updated whenever, whenever we release this kind of video. See you to the next video. Bye.